Hey art teachers, I'm Laura Gardner, an elementary art teacher in Indiana. In our Art Room Hacks mini-series, three fellow art teachers are bringing you innovative hacks for your classroom to run smoother and to make your life a little easier. In today's episode, we're giving you six art supply and organization hacks. For more tips and tricks for art teachers by art teachers, make sure that you like and subscribe to The Art of Ed so you can get more videos just like these. Let's get started. Today's art supply and organization hack is supplying your paint in condiment bottles, but not just any kind of condiment bottles. These are the types of bottles in restaurants where it squeezes from the bottom. Because if you are anything like me, you are tired of having the pumps clog or dry out or having to change them, pressing down on the pumps and having it spray all over the room or shoot across at you and get your clothes all messy. You want your kids to be independent and be able to do it themselves. So these bottles are perfect. They can unscrew on the top and you can refill them. They just squeeze out from the bottom. They don't usually get clogged at all. If it does dry out on the bottom, you just pick the dry paint off of it and it works like new. You can supply any kind of liquid paint in there. I have ones labeled with an A on top for acrylic and with a T on top for tempera. And I also have one with liquid glue in it because if you like to pour glue into little cups, it can squeeze right out of these bottles too. They have been life-changing for me. I keep them on a cart and students can use them too. I have taught them how you don't have to open or close either one of the ends. They just pick it straight up and squeeze it right onto their paint palette. And older students can even scrape back their leftover paint into the top for me. They've been really helpful with unscrewing the top and you can just scrape leftover paint back in so you don't waste any either. You can get these kinds of condiment bottles online and there will be a link in the description below. Today's supply and organization hack is about watercolor palettes. The pan watercolors that you buy. Maybe you have felt stuck using just the colors they give you. Maybe you want to teach a certain color theory concept and you want your students to use just warm colors or cool colors or you want them to use the primary colors to mix their own secondary colors. Or maybe you just don't want them to use the black. You can make your own customized watercolor palettes. What I do is I take the lids off of the paint palettes anyway. It helps the paints dry after they're used. I saved all of the lids and then with the refills that you can buy, so the little individual refills, you can buy whatever colors that you need and use some hot glue and glue them right onto the plastic lid and there you have your own customized watercolor palette. I've made um, warm colored ones cool colored ones, and I really like having the primary colors in there. I do this with kindergarten, and they learn how to color mix their own secondary colors by just using the primary colors. And it's less tempting for them to touch all the other colors if they only have the primary colors. This would even be great if you don't have enough regular palettes to go around for everybody, but you have some more refills you could take the regular palette, taking the lid off, and then gluing the colors onto the lid, and there by just buying one palette and then having some refills, you get two palettes out of it. So you could make it last a little bit longer or for more students. Hi, I'm Andrea Vladarzik, a middle school art teacher from San Diego, California. And for today's art supply and organization hack, um, we're gonna use simple materials to store some sharps. Sharps are always something really delicately handled in class because we want to always tr keep track of them and make sure nobody gets hurt. And I really love the idea of being able to stick these sharps directly in our easy to find materials, including corks and a couple small boxes. So I'm just going to simply add some hot glue onto the end of my cork, pop this into the box. And I have gone ahead and used a permanent marker to number each of the corks so that I can have a sign out sheet that goes with these. And then it's just as simple as adding each embroidery needle into the corks. And the other thing I'm storing in my other box are craft punches that are used in book binding. They're very, very sharp and the lids that they come with um, are really flimsy and don't stay on. 
So this is a great solution for those as well. I've decided to only store nine at a time in each of the boxes, but you could easily get a larger box and store more at a time. So that is my solution and I hope you love it. Today's organization hack is using whiteboard contact paper on the outside of your supply cabinets. I have a ton of cabinets and this is where I store most of my materials and as I teach middle school, I love that students are able to read all of the contents inside and they're able to take ownership of their classroom by getting the materials they need as well as cleaning up at the end of the period. Um, an extra bonus about this is that it does not take away from my normal whiteboard space where I have my objectives written or where I cast my screen. It doesn't interfere at all with my normal processes and it doubles as a space where we can wipe everything off and students can play games like win, lose, or draw in table teams. Um, sometimes I even put messages for the students um, about things that are very period specific, like I need the fourth period class to put up chairs today because it's a half day. So sometimes I'll even put reminders there. So it's a great multifunctional space. It's easy to remove, it's contact paper. So it doesn't leave a sticky residue. You can just peel it right up when you're done with it or if you wanna change. So I hope you enjoy this hack as much as I do. Hi, I'm Matt Young, an art teacher from Columbus, Ohio. And today's supply hack is how to use leftover boards and some canvas that we had left over from painting class to make a clay board on which your students can do their work at their tables on clay. Now, I don't know about you, but I only have five minutes in between my classes and I have to go from like teaching ceramics to teaching painting. So cleanup and time is essential for me. And if you happen to have a shop class, I had the shop teacher cut some scrap boards into some nine by 12 boards, or you can go to your local hardware store and see if they'll cut some down for you. We had leftover canvas from our painting classes and making our paintings on canvas. And with the staple gun, a few minutes, and a few teacher helpers, I have saved myself tons of time by creating these clay boards, which some last for years, to have the students work on the clay at their table, their mess is contained to this space, and then at the end of the period, they can take the clay board and move it, and the tables are clean as a whistle, saving me time and energy in between my periods. I'm gonna show you how to take 3D printers and use them in your classroom for all kinds of things, especially if you teach clay, you can create textures or for printmaking, you can create stamps. Now, many of you have 3D printers in your room and you're like, whoa, what? I've never really used them or found a project for them. Well, there's no need to create a new project. Let the 3D printers dictate you creating things for projects that you already have. For example, we do a slab building project where we use textures in clay and maybe the kid wants a scales texture to go on their clay to make it look like a dragon. You have this capability with 3D printers. If you go to this website called Thingiverse, it has all kinds of cool free things that people have already made. And of course you can find all kinds of things with really cool textures. Now, if your students are searching for something in particular, for example, a student wants to put scales like a dragon or a snake on their project, you can type right into the search bar the thing you're looking for and see what people have made with scales. Like this one right here would make an excellent piece to be uh, rolled into clay for some kind of texture. There is another great program called Tinkercad. And Tinkercad will allow you to easily drag and drop shapes, place them on a board to be able to print off for the students to make their own custom textures and or pieces for printmaking. Now, maybe you don't have a 3D printer in your classroom. I wrote a grant for mine. I got a couple of them for a few hundred dollars, but maybe you have a robotic slab in class. We have 15 3D printers in our robotic slab and they are more than happy to print things for ourselves. Don't have a robotic slab in your room. Maybe there's a few in your library or maybe at a local place that kind of is a maker space. All of these places are willing to help you out to create custom textures, stamps, and other unique items for the classroom, even adaptability pieces using 3D printers in your art room. Hey, art teachers. That wraps up our six art supply and organization hacks. If you have more hacks you wanna share with us, make sure that you use the comment section below and we would love to continue the conversation. Stay tuned for our next episode on artwork, organization, and storage. 
For more tips and tricks for art teachers by art teachers, make sure that you like and subscribe to get videos just like these. We'll see you in the comments below. Bye. Thank you.